This is my really cheap NAS build. This NAS has 18 terabytes worth of redundant storage and costs less than $350. Now, we're gonna start off talking a little bit about why I even wanted a NAS and how I got to this point of buying a bunch of cheap scrapyard parts off of eBay. So, first off, obviously I do YouTube videos and I do a little bit of photography as well. So I've got a few terabytes worth of data that I like to keep safe and not just kicking around on random hard drives. About eight months ago, I had most of my data stored on this Seagate eight terabyte hard drive. And this drive decided it wanted to corrupt pretty much everything on it. It's got a lot of bad sectors and it seems to be continuing to get more bad sectors the more it's been used. So pretty much everything that was on this got corrupted. But luckily I have a backup, so not a huge deal. I have another uh, a Western Digital, I think it's a WD Elements, or no, WD My Passport. It's a USB, uh, USB 3.0 hard drive. Uh, <clears throat> it's like an external portable USB 3.0 hard drive and that had a backup of everything on it. So I didn't actually lose any data when this drive died, but it was kind of a wake-up call to maybe consolidate some of my data into things besides random hard drives laying around. I also had a really simple NAS set up for a while. It was just a USB uh, hard drive toaster, as some people like to call them, where you slot the drives in. Uh, that was plugged into a Raspberry Pi 4, and that the little NAS actually performed fairly well. It ran Plex and everything else, so it was actually a pretty nice setup, and I liked having that. And I decided that it would be a good idea to try to make a full NAS. Now, originally, about, oh, maybe three weeks ago, maybe even more than that, I found the six terabyte HGST hard drives on eBay for, I think, $38 and some cents a piece. And there were four of them in stock, so I went ahead and just bought all of them because for less than $40 a hard drive, and they're six terabytes a piece, that's about the best deal that I could possibly find on capacity per dollar. Just as a point of reference, these drives cost about $155 for all four of them, which is less money than buying one single new six terabyte drive that are, that's somewhat equivalent to these. I'll be putting up the prices on screen of all the components and everything as we go so you can get the idea of what everything costs. And, including the shipping price as well. The only thing I'm not including is tax because that varies heavily by region. Everything in this machine was purchased from eBay and everything was used with the exception of a power supply. A power supply is the only new part. So speaking of parts, other than the hard drives, let's go ahead and go through all the other parts and what they cost. So I bought the CPU motherboard RAM and CPU cooler all as one unit for $89. And that came with a third gen i5 a mini ITX motherboard, eight gigs of RAM, and the stock Intel CPU cooler. I was kind of worried when I took this thing out of the package because it was kind of just shoved in one of those USPS bubble wrap lined white envelopes, and then that envelope was shoved in a box. There was no anti-static protection or anything on this motherboard whatsoever. They just kind of chucked it in a bubble wrapped envelope and hoped for the best, but it seemed to have worked out fine. Everything works on it, so. No issues there. I will say this is running true NAS and depending on where you look at their website, they either claim that it's a minimum of eight gigs or a minimum of 16 gigs of system memory. Um, it seems like 16 gigs is recommended and eight gigs is required. So we're running in the absolute bare minimum amount of RAM that we could in this system. And it would probably be beneficial to upgrade that to 16 or maybe even 32 gigs if you can get 32 gigs in uh, two sticks on DDR3. I kind of don't think you can though. More RAM definitely would not hurt the system. Also, the reason why I chose this particular motherboard is because it has six SATA ports on it. And when you're trying to run four hard drives plus a boot drive, you need at least five. Unfortunately, most mini ITX boards seem to only have four. So it's kind of a rare thing to find one with six. And that's why I went with this particular one. You could have also gone the route of buying a PCI Express uh, SATA HBA. That could have worked as well, but I kind of wanted to keep my PCI Express port free in case I ever wanted to upgrade to 10 gigabit or two and a half gigabit networking. The only downside of the six SATA port motherboard is that 
two of those ports are SATA 3 gigabits per second and four of the ports are SATA 3 gigabits per second, which means that four of the ports are a little slower. But honestly, that's not going to make any difference when we're just running hard drives like this. That would make a difference on high speed SATA SSDs, but not really for spinning disk like this. There's, those ports should be plenty fast enough, but we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Other parts in this, there is a, uh, it's, it's either a 60 or a 64 gigabyte crucial SSD that cost $13 used. And honestly, if I was gonna do this again, I would probably just buy a new SSD because it's not really worth buying a used one. $13 though, can't go that wrong with it. According to the smart info on that SSD, it's still got 60% of its life remaining and it shouldn't really get much written to it in this application. We're not using it as a cache drive or anything. And in fact, the sequential read and writes on that SSD are actually slower than the se sequential writes on an individual one of these hard drives. So it is a pathetically slow SSD, but it'll work fine. All it's got to do is boot into TrueNAS. We're not using it as a cache drive or anything like that. The power supply is new and it was purchased from eBay, but the seller on eBay was actually Newegg. So apparently you can buy Newegg products through eBay, which is something I didn't know until I did this. Uh, power supply is 40 bucks. It's a 500 watt EVGA power supply. It's nothing special. It's 80 plus rated. Yes, just 80 plus, not 80 plus gold or bronze or anything like that. It feels like a solidly built unit. It's got some weight to it. I don't have any issues trusting this thing, but getting one with a higher efficiency rating may have been worth it in the long run just because this is going to be a system that's powered on 24 seven as a NAS usually is. But hey, my electric rates are really low, so it doesn't bother me too much. So the case is the last thing to talk about. And it's kind of the thing that I am the most remorseful of buying. Uh, I paid 30 bucks for the case and $20 or $35 for the case and $20 to ship it. So $55 total. And it's fine. The thing that I don't like about it is that it seems like the top, the front, the different, the, the buttons on the side over here were painted or coated somehow with sort of a soft touch material. And especially the top was just a sticky mess when I got it. And I actually took a razor blade and I scraped off most of the coating on the top which now it just kind of looks like it's matte black instead of the soft touch stuff. And what I think happened to the top specifically is that the seller of this noticed it was kind of sticky and they went to try to clean it and whatever they used to clean it made it worse. So I ended up having to go through and just strip it off. It's not so sticky in the front panel. It is kind of, it gets grimy. It's like a soft touch stuff. All the dust likes to stick to it. But that's kind of nasty. Case also came with three fans. I guess I should mention that. And the three fans are plugged into a custom adapter that I soldered together myself so I could run all three of them off of the single chassis fan port that's on this motherboard. Motherboard only has two fan ports, one for the one for a chassis fan, one for a CPU cooler fan. So all three of those are running off of one fan port. And they all do spin. They're a little dirty and I need to take an air compressor to this thing and just blow it out. Or a couple other miscellaneous parts that you would have to purchase if you didn't have them laying around. One being screws. Uh, this case did not come with any screws either. So luckily the power supply did come with screws, so I was able to use the power supply included screws to mount it. And then I had some old screws from a different uh, case laying around that I used to mount the motherboard. Another thing you would have to purchase if you didn't already have them laying around would be SATA cables. Now about four years ago, I needed one SATA cable and naturally I bought a five pack of them. So I had four of these nice pretty blue SATA cables that are in here. And then I had one more black braided SATA cable that I had laying around from a previous computer build that I did like eight years ago. So anyway, those are all the parts. We can put the, we can put the side panel back on. This case is also a little bit ridiculous because it has this, these sort of white lightning bolt type lines around both sides and also the front and that has an RGB controller hooked into them. So you can set it to just a solid color. It'll fade through RGB. I just have that turned off because it's kind of ridiculous. 
uh, especially for a NAS, but it's kind of funny it's there. It's wired, it does work if I ever decide I want to light my NAS up, but uh, I don't see the need to do that. I also should mention that in terms of your case choices, you're kind of limited in what you can find, especially for lower budget stuff. It seems like these small form factor type cases bring a lot of money, especially when you're trying to get a lot of hard drive bays in them. That's another thing I don't really like about this case. If you notice, it's really not that small. It's barely going to fit in the place that I'm going to put it, which I'm glad that it does fit, but I thought this was going to be a lot smaller from the uh, pictures online. The amount of sort of wasted space like in this area is quite high. I suppose if you're gonna put a graphics card in it, it'd be a little bit better, but yeah. Um, the other thing, I did find a really cool NAS case for about $75. The only downside with that is that it took a weird type of power supply. It was like a type of server power supply, and it seems like those are kind of hard to get uh, good name brands for. And if you can find good name brands for those power supplies, they're really expensive. So I decided to just go with this because it takes a standard ATX power supply. It had plenty of hard drive base. It works well enough for what I needed to do. Also, I should mention that this motherboard has standard gigabit ethernet, so not crazy fast blazing speeds, but as I already mentioned, we could use the PCI Express slot if we wanted to put a faster NIC in it. Of course, it doesn't matter too much to me because all of my networking equipment's only gigabit anyway, so this isn't really a bottleneck. It's the rest of the system for me. Another thing with my use case is that I'm not trying to push crazy high speeds through it. It's not going to be accessed that much. This is more or less just going to be used as a backup. I'm just gonna have files dropped onto it every once in a while, and every once in a while I'll access those files. But this isn't going to be a very heavily used machine. It's only going to see one user at any given time. So it doesn't need to be super high performance. So the first thing I did after putting all the parts together was just to boot this thing up into Windows just to see if everything showed up hardware-wise. And to my surprise, everything just worked. Uh, I didn't have to go trying to manually add hard drives and have to chase down reasons why anything wasn't working. Everything worked first try, no issues whatsoever. And just for the fun of it, I went ahead and added all four of these drives into a RAID 0 array through Windows Disk Management, so just software RAID, just to see what it would do. And I ran Crystal Disk Mark on that and got pretty good speeds, around seven or 800 megabytes a second. Though I did notice in Task Manager that the drive activity did not go to 100% and they weren't reading and writing as fast as these drives could. When I did the initial testing on these drives, I got about 180 to 200 megabits a second when they were empty. In that task manager run, I was only getting about 160 megabytes a second, which makes me think that the four SATA 2 ports that these drives are plugged into probably can't do the full three gigabits per second per port that they should be able to and there's probably a bottleneck between that SATA controller and the CPU. But of course the 700-ish megabytes a second is going to be way faster than what I could ever access those discs through a one gigabit per second Ethernet port is anyway, so that doesn't really matter. This system is running TrueNAS. I'm not going to go hugely into detail about setting up TrueNAS. You install it just like you would pretty much any other operating system. And you can just create a ZFS pool. You can create a ZFS pool, create a user, and create a share. And it's pretty easy to get up and running. There are probably people that would be way better at making a tutorial video about that. But now I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up in its home, get everything running, put a whole bunch of data on it. We're going to use it for a bit, and then I'm going to come back to you and tell you about the find. All right, it's just a quick little outro video. Couldn't be bothered to bust out all the filming equipment, so I'm just recording this on my cell phone, but this has been running for a little bit over two months now. It's been performing flawlessly, haven't had any issues with any of the drives. Uh, it's been going strong, and you can see my final location for it here is in this little cube organizer thing. It doesn't quite fit right because the top of the case kind of angles up, and unfortunately I had to take off the rubber feet at the bottom front of the case and only the front didn't have to do that to the back but uh, it does fit up in there okay and it works well enough and just to show because I only well, showed it anywhere before if I press this button you get the RGB run down both sides you got red blue green and then you have this sort of pulsing fading 
fading, breathing, red type uh, look. I prefer off, but anyway, that's the NAS build. It's been going pretty strong. I wouldn't recommend using used hard drives and used hardware like this if this is your only place where you're storing your data. You really should have another backup besides this. Uh, unless you don't really care about the data that you're storing, maybe if you're storing, I don't know, a Steam library or something like that, that isn't really a huge deal if you lose it because you can just re-download it. Maybe that's okay, but uh, just a note on used hard drives is you never know when they're going to fail. Though, of course, you never know when the new ones are going to fail either, but uh, I am using quite old, quite cheap hardware here, and the chance of this failing is probably a lot higher than something that is new. But anyway, that's just a quick little disclaimer. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, click the like button. Leave your comments, questions, concerns down below, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.